So it's time for another XR AMA recap and discussion and uh, some neat stuff for this one. Teases about tournament mode, maybe returning more discussion about new class possibilities, uh, some cool design insights from the old days of Hearthstone and the future of Hearthstone, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and jump into it here. The first question uh, for the mercenaries uh, that we currently have in Forge and the Barons, are we going to see those return again as legendary minions for the next expansion or maybe see them return in different ways? So this is a reference to Brukon and Rokara and Tavish, the like main characters from Forge and the Barons. Uh, Ixar says they are new characters, so uh, some of it depends on how they are received, at least for the more distant future. As for this year, a big piece of our story is following these characters, so you can expect to see them in some capacity in every set, even if not directly as minions. And uh, this has been teased before how we're going to like see the progression and sort of level up of these characters and barons. They're basically low level characters. By the end of the year, we're expecting them to become like full level 60 World of Warcraft style characters that are doing awesome stuff, maybe even beyond that, like realizing their sort of position as lore characters in Hearthstone. And um, I think that's like pointing towards hero cards, specifically Ixar's talked a little bit about hero cards in the past. I think in the third set, we could see like all the mercenaries as hero cards. I don't know if they want to do a full like 10 hero card uh, expansion again. That can be kind of intimidating as we saw with like the Death Knights. It's really hard to balance that many different ones. Uh, maybe they'll just show up in like legendary spells or God, who knows, like the weapons they use, right? It could be anything. Uh, it sounds like they're probably not going to be minions or maybe could be, but uh, more likely other card types or just showing up in some capacity beyond just being legendary minions again, which I'm relieved. I would kind of hate to get the same character three times. as just like slightly higher power level legendaries or higher mana cost legendaries, whatever it might be. That'd be boring. So this is a relief, but I'm excited. I think the characters are really charming in Book of Mercenaries. So uh, following along with these, even though they're brand new, it seems like it'll be pretty fun and excited to see where that goes. So this is a good question. You could say I liked it because I've always teased that if uh, Hearthstone adds another new class, I would hope that it's uh, something that's not uh, based in World of Warcraft. Like they create their own new class. I've teased like a Tinkerer class. Uh, we've talked about Bard before, which Ixar also talks about. Uh, but unfortunately for me, it sounds like they're going to stick to Monk and Death Knight first. Says he doesn't want to slip past those, but they have talked about creating their own new class and Bard or some music based class has been really cool to us. So not off the table, but it sounds like they would stick to the Monk and Death Knight plan if they were going to introduce new classes first, uh, which I think a lot of people will probably be excited about. There's a ton of Monk and Death Knight players out there in World of Warcraft or people who have attachments to those classes. So that's totally fine. Uh, but maybe someday, 10, 15 years from now, we'll get a Bard in Hearthstone. And I think that would be really, really cool. So this is pretty interesting. A question about Corridor Creeper and how it kind of slipped past because it's really one of the most just crazy overpowered cards in the history of Hearthstone. And uh, Ixar kind of sharing his uh, design process and how it made it through uh, being quite that overpowered. I don't want to read all of this. I just thought uh, I'd point this to you and let you, you know, pause the video here real quick and read this. If you're interested or of course check out the link in the description to see this full thread the gist of it is basically uh they initially kind of just envisioned quarter creeper is is only activating on friendly minions and didn't quite put together the math on the fact that it's really op if it's triggering on both sides uh, of minion deaths is, which is how it functioned of course and by the time they would kind of realized it was working that way it was just sort of like well let's just see what happens let's let it go through maybe it's not that crazy overpowered and in fact, it was crazy overpowered. And they kind of mentioned how back then there were only a few people doing playtesting regularly, which is kind of crazy to think about. Hearthstone in that era, Cobalt and Catacombs, still only had three people playtesting with like millions and millions of players. That's kind of nuts to consider. Uh, I guess there's more now is the implication, but uh, this is still a pretty interesting story. So I'd, I'd take a look at this real quick if, if I were you and... Um, yeah, XR at least fesses off to saying like, hey, we missed the mark on this one. It was really, really good. Uh, and he should have listened to Reels, and Reels is one of my favorite people at Blizzard. Really one of the first streamers I ever watched before we went to Blizzard. So anyway, cool piece of history here on design. And uh, thank God, I guess we have more people playtesting these days, although perhaps there could still stand to be a few more.
So this one's another interesting uh, design history of Hearthstone. The question is, what made you guys choose Jaina and Garrosh and Anduin and all the other standard hero portraits? Ixar wasn't around, but he pulls in Ben Brode, who thankfully swung by to offer some answers. And um, this is really interesting. Ben Brode says, we wanted a balance of races and genders. We wanted iconic paragons of the class. We also wanted to use iconic characters where we could. Thrall was easy. We were torn between Magni and Garrosh, but I guess Garrosh hadn't quite gone to heal and turned bad yet for warriors. They thought he'd be a cool representation. Uh, Paladin was easy, but Hunter was hard. We wanted a Hunter that could use beasts and a bow. None of the famous Hunters did that. At first, our Hunter was him at Nessingwary. Eventually, we settled on giving Rexar a bow and hoping nobody would notice, which is funny because Rexar historically uses like throwing axes and stuff. I it never even crossed my mind really that he was out of place with a bow. I mean, it just kind of makes sense. He could pick up a bow somewhere along the way and it, it fits as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Cho'Gall was originally going to be the warlock hero. Edwin Van Cleef was there for rogue for a while. And they used to have Alliance and Horde versions of each hero. So it was like Kael Thos and Jaina. He says, Priest was the hardest. We used Tyrande for most of development, but she's also well known for using a bow, riding a tiger, and casting druid spells. So I guess they thought that was a little bit confusing. So they went uh, Anduin routes instead. Um, but I um, guess he was a little not shadow oriented, which they weren't happy about, but eh, it worked out. Anduin was going to cast mind control during a quest, so he said, good enough. And commission a piece of art that shows him using holy and shadow in equal amounts. That's why Anduin has that kind of two-toned face, I guess, to convey the design aspect of him being okay using shadow spells. So really interesting historical insights from Ben Brode there on how they landed where they did for the hero portraits. And frankly, I mean, they feel so iconic and fitting that I don't think any of them were mistakes. I'm a, I'm a big Magni fan, so that would have been cool. But hey, we got Magni pretty quickly as an alternative. So that works for me. So this is a question I've had a few times myself. Like, do I think we should add a banning system to the ranked ladder? So in other words, you hate playing against priests, you can ban priests so that you never queue into a priest. And I do think that would fix some problems from a like fun standpoint, or it's just like, I absolutely hate this one particular matchup. I want to avoid it. But the concern is it introduces a lot of potential balance problems. Could how OP would some classes be if they could just ignore, say, a bad matchup outright. They just might just win all the time because they're just kept in check by basically one other deck. And then that deck becomes super popular and no, no, nobody can really counter that deck. It kind of ruins the balance on ladder. And that's basically what Ixar says here too. He says, this is a cool idea we've thought about, which surprises me, by the way. They've actually considered it, but the implications are complicated. It totally changes what decks are best because you can eliminate any deck's worst matchup. I thought about wanting to try it for the last one or two months of an expansion cycle, but I'm skeptical. It's a good long-term idea. I don't know how you could even just test it for a month or two without like really considering the balance implications. Cause some decks would just absolutely wreak havoc. I think on ladder, if they could remove their worst matchups, I don't know if there's enough counterplay across archetypes and classes to make that a possibility. I'm, I'm up for trying anything, right? Let's see what happens and what works. Cause I think it would make, some people much, much happier in Hearthstone. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Do you think the uh, positive play experience you get out of it is worth the risk to balancing the meta as a whole? I want to hear those uh, takes down in the comments below. So next up, this one's pretty simple. Can we have more sigils? Ixar says, okay. As far as I'm concerned, that's 99.999% confirmation uh, that we're getting a sigil sometime. And Celestalon has teased that before as well, I think for something like the Achievements. And I'm guessing the mini set will probably have a sigil in it. Maybe that's the last one we get. Maybe they try to make this a little bit of a package for Demon Hunter. Now, unfortunately, the other two have failed. So without some other like synergy piece or, you know, a real shift in the way Demon Hunter plays, I don't know that they're going to be any good. I, in theory, I like them. I, I think the damage one in particular is pretty cool, but it's symmetrical, which is a little bit risky. Uh, your opponent has full information, which makes it hard sometimes. So I don't know what it needs to make sigils a thing in Demon Hunter, but um, I'm always about shifting Demon Hunter's playstyle away from hyper aggro and aggression. If sigils can do that, I want more sigils and I want them to be good. This one's probably not really worth including, but just in case people are wondering, is the team working on anything spicy for next year's rotation? And Ixar says, uh, Alec and Chaki have been working on a new core set recently. And that's no surprise. We... 
Uh, expected to get a new core set every year with some changes. It sounds like some cards will remain stationary. They'll stay in core set. We'll probably also get new cards shifted in from Wild again or from Classic. And um, we'll also probably get some new cards, I would guess. They're probably going to print more new cards again. Maybe maybe not as many as this first go-round. But anyway, if you were curious like what core set's going to be about, how it's going to change, they're already working on it this far in advance. I think that's a good sign. And uh, hopefully get some new cards and some new stuff to shake up the core part of the Hearthstone experience. So now I'm moving over to a quick Battlegrounds question from our good friend Slissa. Uh, she's asking if there's any way to do like uh, party rules, custom rules for Battlegrounds lobbies. And Ixar says it's not a crazy idea. We're working on some more expanded Battlegrounds features. So I'll see if there is some interest in making this happen. My first question is, are there enough settings that would make for an interesting experience? So changing things like hero health, hero bands, the minion types that are available, whether certain minions are turned on or off. And uh, I mean, that's just a tiny, tiny slice of the variables you could tweak in a custom Battlegrounds lobby. Uh, Slissa mentions a few great ideas like starting gold or starting level. I think it'd be cool if it was only tier six minions, that sort of thing. Like how crazy could builds get? I would be all about this. We've talked so much about having sandbox modes in Hearthstone Constructed. I mean, for Battlegrounds, it'd be great too. It would be so much fun doing like viewer lobbies where every minion's a tier six from the very beginning of the game, or minions only cost one gold, or maybe minions cost zero gold, and it's just about playing for max APM. There's so many cool things you could do uh, that would be so much fun. They'd make for great content, great stories, great moments. I'm surprised Blizzard has not gone uh, further into user-generated content for Hearthstone. It seems like such a cool opportunity. Maybe it's just so much work and so much overhead that they're just not there yet, but... Um, it seems like it could really, really revitalize the game in a lot of ways. So the fact that Dean's open to discussing this is a positive. I'm sure it's nowhere even close to being a reality, which is sad, but um, it's on their mind and maybe, maybe someday it could happen. So moving over to duels real quick. Uh, interesting question here about duels and treasure drafting and the sort of deterministic nature of building your deck to get certain treasures. And we talked about this very recently while playing duels where there's this sort of um, challenge where you want your deck to fit the treasure you get, but if it's too deterministic and you're guaranteed to get certain treasures, then that's really defining for the meta and uh, kind of creates the same play experience every single time you end up with virtually the same deck or at least the same treasures uh, over and over again, which can have some problems for keeping the game mode fun and fresh and different. And uh, Ixart tags in um, another Blizzard designer here who's been working on the duels system. And uh, basically, I'm not going to read all this, but he says the exact same thing I said just now. Uh, the intention of the system was not to be as deterministic as it turned out to be. There are a handful of factors how it ended up this way. The system should not have 100% chance of giving you a specific treasure. At the same time, you should get at least one treasure offered that works with your deck. Uh, he thinks the feeling of adapting and discovering is very compelling and the current system where it's more deterministic has dampened that. So he's also in favor of keeping things a little more uh, surprising. So I don't know what the answer is here. There's some, some real design problems in duels at, a, at, at just a base level that seem to be very, very difficult to get over. I wonder if it's something to do with the treasures being too narrow in their focus. So in other words, like, having you know very specific like overloads or or um, cards that didn't start in your deck or or dragons or divine shields very very specific sort of treasures like that basically allow you to expose very very powerful and narrow synergies and also become more deterministic because it's like tossing a bunch of divine shields you get divine shield stuff i wonder if if passive treasures should be more generic um, just like, you know, health buffs on minions or um, just stat buffs. Uh, cost discounts are probably a little bit more universal, so those are fine. But when you get into specific sort of keyword manipulations and minion type manipulations, maybe that's a little bit too narrow. So I, I certainly I don't know the answer. I'm not nearly as deep into duels as many people, certainly not as much as the designers. I, I just can identify that it's a problem. I don't have solutions. What do you guys think about duels? How does it feel? I mean, we've been playing a lot of duels on the channel, so you're getting some insights if you haven't been playing it yourself. Uh, what would make duels more fun from a like treasure and you know deck building standpoint without making the game solvable, basically? 
but still make it feel like your deck has opportunity. And if you just get a bad passive, you're just completely screwed, which is the other side of the problem. You want you want a good fit, but you don't want it to be too good of a fit. And where is that magic space in between? I, I don't know. So speaking of other game modes, here's a quick question about uh, sandbox stuff like we talked about earlier briefly. And specifically here from Bytes, the question was about um, fireside gatherings and, and uh, organizers for firesides. That's been his big thing historically in Hearthstone. He's really good at that stuff. Uh, Ixer says, unfortunately, this was actually the core feature of tournament mode. It was largely a tool for fireside gathering groups to run brackets together alongside the fireside functionality we have now. We had plans to expand it, but those went by the wayside when we cut the system. I still don't know the full scoop on tournament mode. I guess maybe if they were envisioning as a fireside gatherings only thing, maybe they didn't see enough uh, use case there because fireside gatherings, frankly, just aren't that popular compared to the rest of Hearthstone's uh, play experience. Everybody's playing ladder. Nobody's really going to events, particularly uh, over the last year or so. Uh, but this was long before anything to do with the pandemic. So they still didn't see the upside there in fireside gatherings. But I think all of us envisioned expanding it much further beyond fireside gatherings, make it a core part of the Hearthstone uh, menu and gameplay so that anybody could run tournaments anytime they wanted. And that would be super cool. So here's the interesting tidbit, though. Ixer says, we still have all that UI and code laying around. Unlikely to put any focus on it until 2022 is our slate is pretty full till then. And that's primarily, I think, because of mercenaries. It sounds like they're kind of all hands on deck for mercenaries game mode. But Ixer didn't say we have no plans to revisit that. He didn't say they're going to revisit it either, but he kind of teased that it's possible that that's something they look to next year uh, as a next thing to do. Maybe the next new kind of game mode or feature set added to Hearthstone could maybe be the revitalization of tournament mode. I thought tournament mode was totally dead. This gives me a little bit more hope that maybe someday we'll get a tournament mode. I, I don't know if it's going to happen in 2022. This is certainly not an affirmative uh, stance that we're moving towards tournament mode next, but he didn't shut it down and cut it out, which is what they've usually done in the past. They've usually said like tournament mode's not happening. We cut that. This left the door open a little more than usual. So glimmer of hope if you're a tournament mode lover and really, really want to see that on Hearthstone. So next up question about the Hearthstone tutorial. Uh, it is a slow tutorial, which is what the question here from Blue Zombie Blood, supporter of the channel, by the way, asks. Uh, it does take a long time to get through. Uh, but Ixar likes the constructed Hearthstone tutorial. He says metrics agree that it's a pretty good tutorial. Uh, I don't know how they've A-B tested that much because I think they've only ever had one tutorial, but perhaps compared to like industry standards or other games or just retention rate through the tutorial, they're happy with the numbers. I'm, uh, I'm willing to accept that, whatever. It's fine. A lot of people have played Hearthstone and made it through the tutorial, so it's probably okay. But it's a terrible tutorial for people coming into the game for Battlegrounds and Mercenaries soon, and they're planning to address that part of it. And I think this echoes a pretty interesting sentiment that Hearthstone is not just Hearthstone constructed anymore. In fact, if the tutorial, the introduction to the game is going to give you options or, or alternate focuses for Battlegrounds and Mercenaries, then that implies two things. They're definitely thinking about Hearthstone more as a platform for various game modes where the kind of core constructed Hearthstone experience is not the only way you're expected to play. And in fact, Battlegrounds and Mercenaries will have equal footing, it seems almost, to constructed Hearthstone if they're going to be a part of the tutorial. Maybe not quite equal, but certainly more significant uh, than, uh, you know, arena or duels or anything of that sort, because those still are kind of rooted in constructed, which brings me to my next point, next point, which is that mercenaries is very clearly so distinct from constructed and from battlegrounds that it's going to require its own distinct tutorial as well. And I've teased this before when talking about mercenaries, a lot of people think, uh, mercenaries is going to be like hearthstone slay the spire. It's almost certainly not. In fact, hearthstone already has slay the spire, it's Dungeon Run. I don't know why that gap exists in people's um, perception so much, but Dungeon Run is basically Slay the Spire. It's just, you know, not uh, characters represented via models on screen like Slay the Spire and a lot of other uh, uh, roguelite deck builder style games. It's just Hearthstone's version of Slay the Spire. Anyway, Mercenaries is not going to be that. I've teased how I think it's going to be much more like something like... Uh, a raid shadow legends versions of Hearthstone, which sounds kind of scary, but hopefully it's monetized well 
unlike Raid Shadow Legends. Regardless, it's going to be unique enough that it demands its own tutorial, it sounds like, as will Battlegrounds, because obviously that's very unique from normal Hearthstone. Now, a lot of people are threatened by this notion that Hearthstone will be a platform for different game modes. They're worried that Constructed Hearthstone is kind of falling to the wayside. I wouldn't be worried about that as, like far, as far as like future-proofing Hearthstone's concerned, because I think Constructed Hearthstone's still the, the big moneymaker for Hearthstone, people buying packs, creating that collection is still how a majority of Hearthstone's profits are determined, even if Battlegrounds is perhaps equal or higher in popularity these days. I don't think Constructed Hearthstone's going anywhere. It's clearly a big part of the design focus, how the teams are structured. It's like the the, the base, the standard. That's the name of the mode, standard. <laughs> uh, these other things are additions, and I'm cool with that. I'm actually fine with it. I want the game to bring in more people. You know, there's cross-pollination across these modes, right? Not everybody just plays one. A lot of people who came for Battlegrounds get curious. They're having fun with the art, the style. They hop in and construct it. Vice versa, mercenaries could do the same, bring in a ton of people that, it, that kind of, uh, you know, move their way across to other game modes. So I think it's great for the health of the game to have various strong, well-supported game modes. I hope mercenaries adds to that. But anyway, this is just a sign that, you know, Hearthstone's changing, it's evolving, and... Game modes are going to be a big part of that evolution, and it sounds like Mercenaries is the next really big step forward. So there you go, that wraps it. So there you go, that wraps it up for uh, this AMA recap. Sounds like there's not gonna be a few for a while. Ixar had a sort of mysterious um, going away for four to six weeks sort of thing. I have some ideas what that might be, but I don't know. Um, so I don't know, maybe a few, few weeks or months before we get another AMA, but, uh, this is a good one. Stay tuned for more in the future. And of course, let me know your thoughts on all these takes and more down there in the comments below. But until then, thanks much for watching this video and until next time, game on.